the challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. Only about a half hour of daylight was left of the winter day in the Yukon when two men stood beside the trail from Dawson. One of them was short and broad with a black mustache and straight black hair that fell down over his forehead from under his parka hood. His partner was younger and slimmer. I'll handle the shooting, Slim. You better get down the trail a ways and stop the dog, see? You think you'll get here soon, Frisco? Maybe he'll camp on the way and won't try to get to the mail cabin tonight. You should be here any minute now. Our dog team ain't too good. Don't you think we'd better take the mail team? They got the best dogs in the territory outside of the police. And they know the dogs. That'd be one sure way to get caught. Now, we forget the mail team. We just take the gold and get away fast. Yeah, it sounds like a dog team now. Go on, get down the trail and stop the team after I shoot. Sure, Frisco. Good luck. There's just enough daylight left. I can't miss. He's all alone. I got him, Slim. Stop that team. Uh. I'll start unpacking the gold. You get a dog team and sled over here. You think you killed him, Frisco? I couldn't miss. I stepped right out and let him have it right in the chest. Maybe, uh, maybe you ought to hide the body. We haven't got time to fool around. Get those dogs, I tell you. Nobody will be on this trail anymore tonight. The wolves will get to him before morning. Let's get that gold and get out of here. Sergeant Preston had received word from headquarters to meet the mail team that was coming down from Dawson City. The mail cabins were stationed at 20-mile intervals, and the Mountie planned to meet the mailman at the cabin near Beaver Creek. The early darkness was closing in as the sergeant approached it, and he noticed smoke coming out of the chimney, though there was no sign of the mail team or sled. As he stopped his team, the cabin door opened. Hulking! Oh, you husky! Hold on! No, it isn't. How are you, Jim? Well, hello, Sergeant Preston. I thought you were raised. He's doing here today with a mail. Yes, I know he is. I'm supposed to meet him here. I got orders to accompany him as far as Selkirk this trip. <laughs> All right, King. I'll get the dogs fed and bedded down for the night and be right in, Jim. Hey, that sounds like Abe's team. Yeah, here they come. The mail team, all right, but Abe isn't with it. Those dogs are coming in by themselves. You're right, Sergeant. Oh, there. Oh, you have to. Oh, now. Oh, oh boys. Oh. Uh, what do you suppose could have happened to Abe? He must have had an accident or something. Something's happened to him, all right. The mail's been robbed. Robbed? Look at the sled. All the lashings cut. You're right. You better backtrack right away and try and find Abe. I'll take my team. Mail team will stay here at the cabin. Come on, Abe. Sorry, King. You'll have to wait till later for your supper. Up front, fella. Sergeant Preston and Jim went back along the trail over which the mail team had come, even though darkness had fallen and the moon had not yet risen. King ran free of the harness ahead of the team. Jim, riding on the sled, called back to the Mountie who rode the runners behind him. It's so dark, we'll never find Abe, even if they didn't hide his body. We'll find him, all right. We must. Faster, King. On, you huskies. You've got a mighty fine dog team here, Sergeant. I've never seen a faster one. I doubt you could find a better one in the Yukon Territory. What's wrong, King? Ho! Ho, you huskies. Ho, now. Bring that lantern, Jim. King's found something. Must be Abe. Yeah, I hope so. Yes. There's a body lying there beside the trail. You're right, Jim. And tracks of two men. I'll get this lantern lit. Good work, old boy. Abe. Abe. 
scared, Georgie? Well, he's still breathing. He's unconscious. Shine that lantern over here, please, Jim. Yeah. He lost a lot of blood. Shot through the chest, but it must have missed his lungs or he'd be dead by now. Well, there's nothing we can do for him here. We'd better get back to the cabin as soon as possible. Poor Abe. I'll bring the sled up here beside him and we'll wrap him in blankets. His hands and feet are frostbitten. We'll have to work fast to save his life. Back in the mail cabin, Sergeant Preston and Jim worked tirelessly to save Abe's life. Most of the night had passed before the mailman regained consciousness. Oh, oh. he's opening his eyes. Abe, Abe. Uh, where? Who? You're safe, Abe. You're safe here in the cabin. Uh, Sergeant Preston. Hand me that brandy, Jim. Uh, here. Now, take a swallow of this, Abe. Easy, easy, man. You were shot just below the shoulder, but you're going to live. Yeah, it's a good thing we got you back here in time. One foot and both your hands were frostbitten. We saved them. How, how did you find me? Your team came straight to the mail cabin with Archer, so we knew something had happened to you. I, I was held up. They took the gold you were carrying. Can you remember what happened at all? Uh, not much, Sergeant. I was coming along the trail, and all of a sudden... Uh, Man stepped out in front of me from behind a rock with with a gun. That's all I remember. Well, I guess they thought they killed you. They did come awful close. Did you get a look at the man who shot you, Abe? Well, he was short and broad. His face it was square like the rest of him. He had a black mustache, and I remember his hair, black and straight, coming down on his forehead from... Under his parka hood. Straight black hair, black mustache, and he's short and broad. He looked about middle age, I think. That's a fairly accurate description, Abe. I, I hope I'm not just imagining it. No, I'm sure you're not. Well, now, you've done enough talking. Better try and get some sleep. Well, thanks, Sergeant, for, for everything. That's all right, Abe. Well, what are you going to do, Sergeant? You're pretty tired. We only got a few hours sleep. Start early in the morning. I may be able to pick up the trail. Well, there's no sign of snow tonight. The tracks won't be covered. Unless they have a fast dog team, I can probably catch them. Uh, you think they'd uh, go back to Dawson? I'll be able to tell which way they went when I look the trail over tomorrow. Well, they must be feeling pretty safe right now. Suppose they thought Abe's body wouldn't be found for a couple of days. Providing the wolves didn't get there first. If they did head for Dawson, I'll send a description up there. We have a telegraph station at Cree's Crossing. In case I don't catch up with them, the Mounties and Dawson will be looking for them anyway. Well, I'm sure glad the dogs and that mail team came straight to the cabin here. Yes, it was a lucky thing for Abe. Well, Jim, we'd better get some sleep. I'm going to start out before dawn. At one point of the route to Dawson, the trail led over a high ridge of hills. On each side, the trail zigzagged back and forth like a huge letter Z from the top of the ridge to the bottom. Sergeant Preston had not spared his dog team after picking up the trail of Frisco and Slim before dawn. As he topped the ridge and started down, daylight was fading, and the Monty planned to camp at the base of the hill. But someone else had made the same plan. And as Sergeant Preston drove his team along the middle trail on the hill that paralleled its base, he heard the sharp barks of a dog team below him. Looking. Hold your huskies. Sergeant Preston stopped his team, and with King beside him, peered over the ledge at two men preparing to camp at the base of the ridge below. <laughs> there they are, King. We caught up with them. Those are the men we're after. What? King! Just at that moment, the rock on which the Monty and Doc were standing gave way, and Sergeant Preston and King went headlong down the slope in a shower of rock and snow. Slim and Frisco, preparing to camp down below, looked up in alarm. Hey, what's that? Look out! Uh, for a minute, I thought it was an avalanche. Yes, it was just a piece of rock broke loose. This ain't too good a place to camp, Frisco. Say, we look there in the slope. There's a man lying there. There's a dog. That's right. He must have fallen over the edge of the trail when the rock gave way. Think we'd better get up there and see if he's hurt? 
He's not moving. Now, we don't want anyone to see us, remember? They might connect us with the mail robbery. He's probably seen us down here anyway if he looked over the edge of the trail. Yeah. Maybe that's how he happened to fall. But you mean he might have been following us? I wonder. But nobody could be after us, Crisco. We killed that mailman. Nobody could have found his body till the next day. Even if he wasn't following us, he must have seen us down here and could tell somebody. I think we'd better get up there on the slope and see if he's alive. Come on. This is going to be a steep climb. What if he is alive? If he's alive, we're going to see to it that he won't tell anyone that he saw us. If he's hurt and can't move, you'll probably freeze to death. His dog wasn't hurt. Look, he's standing there beside him. The man's arm just moved. He isn't dead. Why are you picking up that rock? I, I don't think that dog's dangerous. This rock isn't for the dog. We can finish off the man with a clout on the head. Wouldn't it be simpler to just shoot him? No, someone's liable to find the body. It's got to look like an accident. His head is bashed in with a rock. They don't think he did it falling down the slope. Yeah, that's right. And a shot might have tracked someone on the trail. That snow almost buried him, didn't it? Yeah. Say, that's a good-looking dog. We'll be able to use him on our team. The man's unconscious. Must have hit his head when he fell. As the two men approached from the base of the hill, King suddenly got their scent and his muscles tensed as he recognized it as the men whose trail they had been following. He sensed danger, but he knew that Sergeant Preston needed help, and he watched the men closely, a deep, anxious whine in his throat. Hey, Frisco, that's a pretty big dog. Ain't you afraid you of You might... know what I'm going to do. One crack on the head with this rock will do it. Frisco had not counted on the speed and intelligence of King. As he raised the rock over the mouthy's head, the great dog sprang at him, and dog and man rolled down the slope. Get away! Get him, Help! Stop him! Get off me, of you devil! I'm coming, Frisco! King let go of Frisco as he heard Slim's footsteps coming toward him and turned on the other man, ready to spring. Get away from me! Slim ran down the slope. Run, Slim! Run before he grabs you! King watched while the two men ran and fell headlong down the slope. Then the big dog went back to his vigil beside his master as Slim and Frisco picked themselves up at the base of the hill. It's, it's the dog coming. No, he went back to his master. Are you hurt? No. My park is all that saved me. That cur tore a big hunk out of me. Maybe we'd better go back and shoot him. It's the only way we could finish the man off. We want this to look like an accident, not a murder. Uh, Let's get away from here, fast. If the man's unconscious, he'll probably freeze before anyone finds him. We'll keep going all night and get as far away as possible. We should get to Dawson in four days. As Slim and Frisco's dog team faded out of sight, King lay close to Sergeant Preston. He whined anxiously as he saw the Monty stir and barked his delight when he heard Preston's voice. King. King, old fella. Oh, I'll be all right in a minute, old boy. Come on, my head. Well, half buried in the snow. We took quite a tumble, didn't we, boy? Guess I twisted my ankle, too. Those men we were trailing, they've gone, I wonder. Well, what's that you have, King? Bring it here, fella. Give it to me, boy. Right. Piece of fur torn from a parka. And the snow around here is disturbed. I wish you could tell me what happened, King. Hello! Is someone down there? Someone up on the trail, King. Hello? Can you help me? This dog team up here. Is it yours? Yes, that's my team. Would you bring it down around the trail? I'm hurt. Wait, I bring him down. It takes half hour, maybe. Thanks. I'll be able to get down this slope, I think. Well, King, this is a little... Look, now, if I can hang on to your harness, I can get down the bottom of this hill. You made good time. I'm glad you came along. Oh, oh there. Oh, oh there. You do fall over sight of hill, no? Yes, I was standing on a rock and it came loose. I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Oh, Sergeant Preston. I've heard about you. Me, I'm Jules Flaubert. I don't know when I've been so glad to see anybody, Jules. Uh, you, you are hurt? Why, my ankle's twisted and I got a bad knock on the head. Uh, that is long fall, you call. Yes. Me, I see your dog team up on trail. 
I hear this dog bark down below. King fell down the slope with me, but he wasn't heard. I will take you to Cree's Crossing. She's not so far from here. I'd like to get to Cree's Crossing as soon as possible. I want to send a message to headquarters in Dawson. <laughs> it was almost a week later that Slim and Frisco arrived in Dawson City. Frisco sat back in a corner of the gold horseshoe bar waiting for Slim and listening to a shabby-looking man at the next table as he talked to one of the waiters. No, no, my luck, she's very bad. This claim I got, there is not enough gold to put in my tool. Well, I'm sorry, Andre, I'd like to help you out, but I got orders not to give you any more credit. This is your last drink of the gold horseshoe until you can pay for it. Then I try and make it last long time. <laughs> Almost couldn't find you back in this corner, Frisco. Did you buy those supplies? Yeah. <laughs> but I got bad news. Huh? We got to get out of here fast. What's wrong? There's a poster up with your description on it. What? Wanted for robbing the mails. What? How could they get my description? I got the story listening to the post office clerk telling another man about it. Seems the mailman wasn't killed. A Mountie found him and saved his life. And he described you as the man who shot him. But I, I don't see how he could have lived. I shot point blank at him. I couldn't have missed. He got one good look at you before you dropped him. What does the poster say? It says you're a little over five feet. You're broad and have straight black hair. And you're between 35 and 40 years old. Oh, well, a rotten look. Well, I'm worried now about the man who fell down that slope. Maybe he was a Mountie trailing us or something. Mountie? He was half buried in the snow. All we could see was his fur parka. The reason I'm wondering about it is because people were saying something about a Sergeant Preston getting on the case. They say he had a big dog that helps him. From the way they talked, it sounded like that dog that took the piece of fur out of your parka. But he couldn't have got up here to Dawson this fast. Well, he ain't here yet. The description of you was telegraphed up here from Cree's Crossing. Cree's Crossing? That's right near the place where the man and dog fell over the slope. Well, we got to do something fast. The Mounties will be looking for every man in the place that looks like you. Yeah. You better think of something quick. Let's get out of here. Slim, look over at that next table. What? What? That man drinking by himself. Yeah? Well, what of it? He's just my size, and he has straight black hair. Yeah, he has. And he's just about my age. What are you getting at? I heard him talking to the waiter. He's broke. Well, what's that got to the do with The answer's that description on the poster. Nobody would ever take you two for twins. There's no picture of me on the poster, you fool. They don't know what I look like. No. No, that's right. And if we could plant a sack of that gold on him with the government stamp on it, he might have a hard time explaining how he got it. You mean if they arrest him, they'll quit looking for us? For a while, anyway. Now, there he goes. Let's follow him. Be careful now. Let me handle everything. Andre Dormet lived in a tumble-down shack at the edge of town. He talked to himself Andre, cheerfully as he poured the last of his tea into a boiling pot. We, oui, Andre, this is last of those tea. But tomorrow, maybe someone will bring you a nice piece of caribou meat. Oh, if that is a guest for supper, I hope he brings something to eat. Good evening. Bonsoir. Coming. Hope you don't mind having visitors for a while. No, I'm very happy to see you. Uh, but my cabin, she's not so good. Well, we're not interested in the cabin. I saw you back there in a the gold horseshoe. I uh, noticed you were just my size. Ah, oui, that's right. <laughs> you and me, we are short and... Uh, Big to the middle, no? <laughs> yeah. uh, it's kind of hard for me to get clothes that fit. You see, I had an accident. I tore my parka. I thought maybe you'd sell me yours. My parka? But those parka, she's the only one I have. I cannot freeze, and I have no money. Nah, don't worry about that. My partner and me hit it rich. Anyway, I'll give you this old parka of mine until you get another. You don't mind wearing one with a piece torn out of it. Well, I... And uh, I'll trade you. This sack of gold and my parka for yours. Sacre bleu. You will give all that money? No, we can spare it. I'd like to help you out. I heard the waiter tell you he wouldn't give you another drink. My luck, she has changed. You are most kind. Uh, 
And you, uh, Reed? Reed? No, me, I am poor, ignorant man. I have never learned to read or write. Well, uh, this bag has my name on it. The deal, then, huh? Oui, oui. But you get bad bargain. Here is Parker. Uh, thanks. I'll give you mine. But if you wait, I go in town and buy some food for supper. And maybe some drink for to celebrate, no? We're leaving town tonight, sir. Thanks just the same. But where you go? If you have no place to sleep, you are welcome to my cabin. We're leaving the country and we're anxious to get going. Oh. What lucky thing for me we are the same size. With this mummy, I have good time for months with no work. <laughs> well, that's the idea. If you treat a lot of people now, they'll remember it when you broke again. Come <laughs> on, Sam. You got to get going while there's still some daylight left. It was later that night when Constable Kearns of the Northwest Mounted Police locked Andre Dormet in a cell at headquarters. Andre was tearful and confused. But I... I tell you, I have done nothing. This man, he gave me that gold. Sorry, Andre. Your story sounds very odd. Everybody knows you haven't a claim that's worth anything. And all of a sudden, you get a lot of money. But this man, he buy my parka. Not for that much money. Besides... You answered the description of the man who shot the mailman. And the bag of gold had the government stamp on it. I now get in there. But me, I cannot read. He tell me that's his name on bag of gold. You'd better think of another story if you want anyone to believe it. Now, Sergeant Preston will be here tomorrow. He'll have a lot of explaining to do. Oh, sir. And I think all the time that my luck has changed for better. It was the following day that Sergeant Preston arrived in Dawson. Constable Kearns held Andre's parka before him. Here's the piece of fur that King tore from the parka of the man we were chasing. And it matches perfectly. Mm. This is your man, all right, Sergeant. There's no question about it. You say he claims he's innocent. Oh, yes, he does. And we can't find the rest of the gold he stole. Oh, we've searched his cabin, but he must have hidden it somewhere else. Well... Maybe you can get him to tell you where he put it. We'll go back and see him now. I'll uh, put this leash on King. Come here, fella. Come here, boy. Why are you leashing him, Sergeant? King tore this piece of fur out of his park, and I don't know just what he'll do when he sees this man again. Mm. There you are, King. One boy. Oh, he's uh, right back here, Sergeant. Um, his name is Andre Dormet. Uh, he'd been celebrating last night buying drinks for everybody in the gold horseshoe. Oh? Well, he may tell us the truth now that he's had time to think things over. Well, here he is. Morning, Andre. Oh, sure. Go on in, Sergeant. All right. This is Sergeant Preston, Andre. Uh, you've seen him and his dog before, I think. No. Me, I have never seen them. Oh, hello, you nice dog. Maybe you will believe Andre, no? Why, he's petting King. Why should I not pet him, huh? He's only one who believe Andre. Nobody our friend but this dog. This can't be the man we're after, Constable. But you said yourself that that piece of fur matched his parka. Well, all the evidence points to him. If this were the man, my dog would know it. King wouldn't attack him one time and be friendly with him the next. But, well, just because your dog happens to like this because man... Because he does, I want to hear Andre's story. How did you get this parka, Andre? Well, this man, he gave me big bag of gold for my parka. And he gave me his parka, too. Was there only one man? No, there was two. Would you know them if you saw them again? Oui, them I would never forget. So much trouble they have made for me. Did they talk about going anywhere? I mean, uh, did they say where they were going when they left here? No. One I hear say they will leave country real soon. That's all. Leave the country? That means they'd head for 40 Mile in Eagle City to get over the border. Do you really believe this man, Sergeant? Yes, I do. And what's more, I'm going to get permission to take Andre along with me. To identify them if I catch up with them. Oh, that I would do. Merci, Sergeant. They haven't much of a start if they left yesterday. I caught up to them before. I'm sure I can do it again. Well, trusting a dog against all this circumstantial evidence. Well, it's up to the inspector. I don't know what he'll say. The inspector knows King. I'll have you out of here in about an hour, Andre. We're starting for 40 Mile and traveling fast. Merci, Sergeant. We will catch them. You, me, and... And this very smart dog king. Uh, 
Frisco and Slim had reached 40 Mile. And before they found a room for the night, they went into the Silver Slipper Cafe. As they stood at the bar, Frisco chuckled happily. <laughs> well, Slim, you gotta admit I'm smart. There's no way that Frenchman can help but get caught. Maybe the mailman will know he isn't the one who shot at him. Not a chance. But my parka, nobody could tell the difference. And they certainly won't believe Frenchy's story about selling an old parka. <laughs> Not for that kind of money. Yeah, we'll get a room tonight and sleep the clock around. There's no hurry now. And that's what you'd call dragging a mighty fancy red herring across our path. <laughs> The great dog, King, had led Sergeant Preston's team at a fast pace from Dawson to Forty Mile. The trail was a well-used one, and the dogs covered the ground like a racing team. It was only a short time after Frisco and Slim had entered the Silver Slipper that the Monty's team drew up in front of the door. Oh, King! Oh, you huskies! We'll start here at the Silver Slipper, Andre. Everyone stops here first. If they're not in here, we'll search the whole town. I hope they have not got out of the country. They didn't have time to get any farther away. Now, uh, you'd better go in the back way. King and I will take the front door. You think maybe they try to leave if they see a mountie? Yes, they may. We can't predict what they'll do. All right, you go on around the back. Wait. Come on, King. We go this way. Frisco and Slim faced the door, having chosen a table toward the back of the cafe. Frisco had lifted his glass, but put it down hastily as the front door opened. Slim, is that a Monty coming in? Yeah, let's get out of here. Hold it. I got my gun ready. Maybe he won't notice us. Frisco, it's the same dog. Get away from me. What's wrong with that dog? Back, King. Down, fella. He seems to think he knows you. He can't do that to me, Austin. Hey, who hit him? Hey, look, right. That man knocked out. Me, me, Andre, I will not let him hurt that fine dog king. He's the man, Sergeant. This is my parka he's wearing. Well, Andre, I didn't expect you to knock him out with a bottle. What's the idea? Don't try to get away. Hey, what goes on here? The Frenchman hit this man with a bottle. That's a money. You men are under arrest. Well, you aren't any proof. Oh, yes, we have. Andre here can identify you as the men who sold him the parka for a bag of government gold. We, oui, we, oui, they are the ones. That parka, she's mine. If it hadn't been for that dog, we... Eh, we, oui, we, oui, that dog. He's one fine animal. He's only one that knows this parka, she's not mine. That's why I hit this man with bottle when he go for to shoot. I'm sure King's grateful, Andre. Oh, me. I am one who is grateful. <laughs> yes, King, old fella. If it hadn't been for you, an innocent man might have been punished. But thanks to you, this case is closed. The Challenge of the Yukon, the copyrighted feature, is brought to you each week at this time. And all names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. Saturday night dull. Not on your life if you keep company with ABC. We have a lineup of shows to keep you entertained from early in the evening until it's time to go out and get the Sunday morning papers. For mystery a la mode, Ross Dolan Detective is on hand Saturday nights. And when Ross seeks to solve a crime, it means 30 minutes of solid action and suspense. Speaking of suspense, wait till you hear famous jury trials, the stirring courtroom program that dramatizes typical American jury trials. Then there's gangbusters with true crime cases straight from police files all over the country. Murder in Mr. Malone is another tense mystery that's bound to keep you sitting on the edge of your chair as that famous criminal lawyer, John J. Malone, tackles a case of murder. For smashing thrills from early to late Saturday nights, be sure to listen when these great shows are broadcast.